Hey everyone, this is Tsar from Infinity and today I'll be explaining our product roadmap template. Infinity's product roadmap was built in order to help product managers, developers and SaaS founders to define, organize and manage a map of features for their product. In the next 10 minutes, I'll show you how to quickly create a product roadmap and have the ability to define features and plan releases, prioritize features by importance and effort, track development status of the features, and keep all stakeholders on the same page as well as collaborate with your team. Let's get right into it. We'll kick this tutorial off from a columns or Kanban view where we have the features for our product grouped by feature status. For starters, we categorize our features by idea, to design, to develop, working on it, and live. In this case, a feature for a roadmap is actually an item which can be seen under each column. Furthermore, every feature has its own set of attributes which are defining it. As Infinity supports 17 different custom attributes, you can go as deep as you want into customizing your features. Here's what we use to define our features. Name of the feature, feature description, IC score, this is a special kind of scoring system which is often used in product development to calculate the importance of a single feature. IC score is basically a result of equation when you multiply impact that the feature will have, marked as I, confidence in building the feature, marked as C, and ease of implementation, marked as E. Then we have user stories, or simple tasks and requirements of a feature told from the perspective of a user or a customer. Then of course we have production start dates and release end dates for the feature, feature size, then tags or labels we're using to categorize our features by different parameters and finally members assigned to build a certain feature. As we've seen how our attributes showed in a certain view, now it's time to enter the edit mode. Once you click on the feature in the column view, a model will pop up with all the attributes currently being used for that item. All the attributes we have seen in the previous view can now be adjusted. We can add new attributes, edit the name of the current ones, change their values, or delete them. If we go back to the top of the model, we'll see additional options such as comments and activity log. Comments are a great way to collaborate with your team as you can mention your team members, update them on the feature status, or communicate through development status. As you can see on the left hand of the screen, we're currently located in the product roadmap folder where we can organize a unique set of data. But, inside a single folder, you can create different tabs, which are basically the ways to preview your data. It's as simple as this, the more tabs you have, the more ways you can visually organize the same data in that folder. Let's see how it works. As we were first located in the status tab, where we organized our data in columns view, let's switch to all features tab, where, again, the same data is organized in a bit different way. Here, in all features tab, We've used a table view to list all the features that are included in our roadmap, as well as a couple of columns which represent the attributes that item has. As table view is the most convenient one for inserting new data, let's quickly add a new feature to our roadmap to show you how quick and easy it actually is. By clicking on add a new row, we'll create a new feature. Now what we have left is to fill out the rest of the data for our feature. Description, attachment, user stories category, etc, etc. Let's stick to the part where we've assigned someone to a certain feature. Once someone is assigned to a certain item, that person will get an instant notification. Let's quickly go back to the status tab to see the difference between the first two configurations. As I mentioned before, the data from the two tabs is completely the same, but rather organized in a different way. We can see that in this tab, we're using columns view, as well as group feature to have our columns separated by different parameters. In this case, it's the status label, which has five different tags. If we open the item model again, we'll find the status label over there as well, with an ability to edit it, which will directly impact the group in the view. With columns view, you can create an attractive interface to track a certain process from the initial stage, or idea, to the final stage, or execution. At the very bottom of a single column, you'll see a plus sign which will create a new item and automatically add a certain tag for it, depending on which column we create an item. Another feature you can use in the columns view is Customize, which you can find at the top right hand side of the screen. 
Customize feature will enable you to show or hide certain attributes from the current view or tab. As our features have an attachment attribute which is currently hidden from the status tab, let's toggle the attachment attribute on in order for our images to preview. Voila! Another tab we have is called Releases. This one is also organized using Columns view, but this time we've used a different grouping system, by a label called Release. As Release label has four different tags, Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4, that's what our columns will be this time. Switching over to a new tab called Categories allows us to do the same. Use columns view again, but group by different label. This time it's a label attribute called Category. Now our columns are Usability, Engagement, User Growth, Systems and Enterprise. And finally, our final view is a calendar which will help us have a better look at the start and due dates of a feature production. As we've got two date attributes for our features, we can click on the Select Range Date where Customize Feature used to be and select Start as a Start Date and Due Date as an End Date. Now the calendar will show the full length of the time it will take to release a single feature from the very start of its production to the date it's done and live. The final thing I'd like to show you is how to import this template to your board. The first option you have is to create a new board from the initial dashboard. Just select the load the template option, fill out the necessary information and Infinity will automatically redirect you to the template selection page where you'll be able to find the product roadmap template as the very first pick in the featured section. The other option you have is to load the template directly into a folder. While already being located in any of your boards, just click on the new folder on the left hand side of the screen, after which a new panel will open with an option to load the template. The flow is basically the same, either search for the template you need, or find the product roadmap template in the featured section. And that would be it guys, hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on how to build a flexible product roadmap for your product development processes. I'll see you with the next video where I'll be guiding you through another Infinity template.